Hello again internet, Astro with Roro here and I have been graciously given this ZWO AM5 mount for two days to test and provide you with my initial impressions of it. A huge thank you to Stars and Stuff who loaned this to me and I would encourage you to check out his work linked down in the description. As always, this video is agenda free and I will be telling you my honest opinion about this mount. If you'd like to see more of this mount, including deeper performance guides and a side-by-side -side comparison of this and a Rainbow Astro RST-135, then make sure you're subscribed and that you comment down below so Stars and Stuff and I can set up more time together. Let's start with talking about build quality. Generally, I would say the AM5 has a good to very good build quality. Based on my initial impressions, I have no concerns or worries about this mount's ability to hold itself together and maintain itself over the years. I think ZWO did a good job here and you can tell that they have practice at machining and builds. From a style perspective, the finish is nice and the two-tone red and black matches their brand well and is quite eye-catching. Some of the physical styling choices are a departure from ZWO's traditional look. Many of their existing items are rounded from cameras and even the nicely bezeled edges of their ASI Air. This mount is much more angular and square than any other ZWO product that I can think of. This gives it a much more industrial look and a much more brutalist feel with all of these sharp edges and square look. I do wonder if they worried that a rounder look may feel too close to the Rainbow Astro design style. The saddle feels well designed and I love how ZWO has provided clamps for dual rail styles. The clamp screws move smoothly and hold firmly as well which is nice. The carry case that comes with the mount is quite compact but does have a little bit of space for some extra accessories that you may fit in. It's got a nice carry handle and while I haven't carried the mount for an extended periods of time, in my trips to and from the car, I've had no complaints about the straps or weight on my shoulder. Now let's talk about how to physically set up and get started with the AM5. If you're using the carbon tripod and not using the half pit, then you start by attaching this base plate to the mount. From here, you can quick attach the base plate into the tripod and can secure it with this latch. Next up, screw in the 3 8 inch long screw, then slide on the spreader and tighten the fastening screw. Time to fully tighten down the side latch. One thing I have noticed is that if it isn't latched super tight, then there can be wiggle in the mount, which may be a point of improvement in future iterations. In general, the setup isn't bad, but I do wish that ZWO had simplified it a bit more. In contrast, the setup on my RST-135E is much faster. But this is a minor gripe, only required if you plan to take the mount on and off the tripod regularly. Once the mount is attached to the tripod, you can begin by loosening these clutches here, allowing you to adjust your azimuth and altitude. The screws all turn smoothly and are of decent quality. I've had very little trouble with polar adjustments when aligning and generally the knobs have worked well. I did have to be careful towards my very fine adjustments though, as it felt a little too easy to overshoot with the tolerance of the azimuth screws. Once you're aligned, tighten back up the clutches. The altitude clutches feel nice and smooth, but the azimuth clutches get a little stuck when they're fully engaged. Another very minor picking point is that when the azimuth clutches are tightened, they stick out at a weird angle, which is an interesting design choice. The AM5 comes with a brake in it to stop any back driving while it's turned off. With a load attached and off-centered, we can see that when we remove the power, it holds the weight no problem, and you can hear the click of the brake engaging and disengaging when power is added or removed. One thing to note is that the brake is only on the RA axis, and there is no brake on the declination axis. Due to this, you can encounter back driving on the deck axis if your payload is not sufficiently balanced. I'd recommend you do a rough balance on this axis to prevent any chance of this occurring if you are concerned about back driving. If you'd like to know more about back driving, I do have a full video dedicated to it, which you can see on my channel. ZWO claims a load capacity of 13 kilos without a counterweight, but a 3 h inch counterweight bar can be threaded into the bottom to go up to 20 kilos. Finally, there is a power button on one side of the mount that has a nice click to it, 
and is backlit in red showing you when the mount is powered on. On the other side, ZWO has included a 12 volt power output. The hand controller is different from any other mount hand controller I've seen before. It's obviously been designed to be minimal and very intuitive to use, however, this definitely comes at a cost. The hand controller allows you to move the mount very easily. By rotating the joystick, you can be very precise with the movements and where you want the mount to be. And by clicking the joystick down, you can move between high and low speeds. You can toggle the tracking on and off with the second button, and the last button cancels movement and stops the mount. This is where I start to understand that the use of this mount is different from most other mounts on the market. This mount seems to be designed for use with digital assistance only, and you will find features lacking unless you have a phone, a computer, or an ASI Air. This mount has a very limited capacity to work for visual astronomers unless you are also willing to use the app on your phone or a tablet. So let's now talk about how you can connect with this mount and drive it. Starting with the phone app, it seems to be quite full featured, allowing you to select fields of view based off your camera and telescope's focal length. From here, you can browse through the sky and it shows deep sky objects like you would expect. Power the mount on and you can connect to the AM5's Wi-Fi. However, I do wish that ZWO had provided stronger Wi-Fi passwords by default so I would recommend you change that early on. Once connected, you can then control the mount and go to objects in the sky using it. To do a star align, you can tap any object, click go to object, center that object, then hit align. It feels pretty intuitive and the mount responds quickly to commands in the app, which is great. Now, I do not own an ASI Air, so unfortunately I will not be able to take you through that side of the mount's ability to be controlled. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, ZWO. So let's move on to how to use this mount with a Windows machine, and I'm afraid to say that this is by far the weakest side of the AM5. Getting started is easy, you download the software off the ZWO website and install the ASCOM driver for the AM5. Once installed, you can bring up the ASCOM hub and set up the mount by choosing the COM port, which you can find in Device Manager under Ports. Once the mount is connected, you can control it digitally here, and if you're looking to not integrate any further with any other software, then you're done. However, if you are looking to use it with PHD or something like SGP or Nina, you may find you run into some hiccups. As of the time of recording, this mount is only able to be controlled by one piece of software at a time. This is a real frustration and a huge sticking point as it means you cannot use, say, Nina for your plate solving and centering on an object and then PHD2 for your guiding. You must manually swap connections by disconnecting the mount from Nina and then connecting it to PHD2 and then disconnecting it from PHD2 and connecting it back to Nina for the Meridian Flip and then back to PHD2 again afterwards. ZWO has mentioned that they're working on a fix to this and I hope that they can deliver it soon as this honestly feels like a giant oversight for this mount. I truly cannot understand how ZWO did not find this flaw out before releasing this mount and software and I hope that they do indeed fix it soon as without this you're pretty much pushed down the path of the ASI Air which I think is very poor form from them. However you go about it, once you are centered on your object and you begin imaging, how does the mount perform? Well, let's dive into this mount's tracking and guiding capabilities. I will preface this section by saying that my time under the stars was limited with this mount and there may be ways to further improve the performance of it. Your mount may also perform differently to this one that I have here for better or worse. I completed two runs of the PHD2 guiding assistant to track the mount's periodic error. The periodic error is how accurate the mount is able to be due to the mechanical limitations of the build of the mount itself. The first run was at one second exposures and the second was at two second exposure times. This was to remove any potential seeing issues that could have arisen at one second. As you can see, both runs came back with around 20 to 23 peak to peak arc second PE on the RA axis. This is consistent with what ZWU claims on their website and in the spec sheet for this mount. If we look at the PE graphs of the mount, you can see how this plays out. In general, there is a slow wander of the PE. However, there are moments when this drift becomes quite fast and you will need to use fast guiding exposures to ensure the drift is corrected properly by PHD2. 
I would suggest using guiding exposures between about one and one and a half seconds. While PHD2 can mitigate seeing with multi-star guiding, I would advise caution with ultra-fast guiding exposures as chasing the seeing can cause quality issues in your images. One item that I haven't been able to see ZW talk about on their spec sheet or website is this mount's backlash. When running a backlash compensation test in PHD2, there was some backlash detected, which surprised me. Normally, harmonic drive mounts don't have much, if any, backlash, and this is something I would like to investigate further, so just be advised that backlash could potentially crop up in this mount, but for now my data on this is limited. What about the guiding performance of the AM5? Well, I ran multiple guide tests with this mount using similar guiding settings to my RST-135E, since both are harmonic style mounts. This was a good starting point, and after a few little tweaks I was able to get very respectable guiding from the AM5. Once again, let me preface this by saying this guiding is from my apartment balcony in the middle of Sydney, a bottle 8 and 9 zone. Because of this and the scene conditions of my inner city location, the numbers you see in these graphs will not be as low as what you will be able to achieve with this mount if you are under better conditions. Total guiding over the four sessions I performed averaged around one arc second RMS. The best sustained result achieved was 0.79 and the worst was 1.3 arc seconds. The two longest sessions averaged 1.05 and 0.97 arc second total RMS. In general, the guiding was well behaved and at times the RMS total was as low as 0.6. However, I did notice that there were a number of excursions the mount made between 2.5 and 5 arc seconds. If we look at the frequency of the mount and these movements, we can see there are a few harmonics that could join up and cause these to occur. This may explain why these seem to come about again and again with no other apparent cause. Of course, it could have been wind or sing too. Please bear in mind that this is not a lot of data to go off and if I had more time or had been provided a unit from ZWO, I would have enjoyed diving deeper into this for you all. But let's take a step back from the nitty gritty and see what kind of images you can achieve with this mount. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're all after. This image of a random spot in space was taken on my Red Cat 51 and is raw straight out of camera. At 5 minutes exposure, it covers most of the AM5 cyclic motions, which take about 7 minutes to fully complete. This image was guided at 2 second intervals and you can make out some elongation of the star shapes in the image. When I lowered the guiding exposures to one second and retook the image, you can see that it resulted in much less star trailing, although they weren't entirely removed. The remaining streaking could be due to either the mount, some of the wind, or the scene conditions on the night. Once again, I would need more time to test this away from my balcony and the surrounding buildings. Stars and Stuff has had more time with this mount and has achieved some very nice results from his home. In fact, he captured this incredible close-up of IC2944, the running chicken nebula, on the AM5 with a very heavy payload, the Celestron 9.25 inch Edge HD with a 0.7 times focal reducer. A truly incredible result. So what is my conclusion on the AM5? Well, I think that ZWO has created a very promising mount, priced competitively in the new harmonic drive market. Over time, I believe users will optimize the PHD2 guiding settings, allowing this mount to guide and perform reliably in the sub 1 arc second RMS error range, perhaps even reaching 0.75 or 0.5 arc second accuracy. This is excellent for a mount at this price range. The build quality is good and the weight of the mount is very good if you're coming from a non-harmonic mount. Compared to some other harmonic mounts, it does weigh on the heavy side, but it also does provide quite a good payload capacity, and this is a trade that I would be happy to make. If you're imaging at wide to moderate focal lengths, this mount will be very capable of providing you with a solid platform to image on. If you image at long focal lengths, you may struggle with off-axis guide or exposure times that can control the mount's sometimes erratic periodic error. There are two standout audiences that I would recommend not to purchase this mount. Firstly, if you do a lot of visual observing and you don't want to have to use a phone or a tablet during your session, this is not the mount for you. The other is if you are looking to image unguided or you are not able to take short guide exposures. 
The PE on this mount is simply too large to not receive frequent guide corrections. From a software perspective, I hope that ZWO continues to iterate on their ASCOM drivers for this mount, as currently they feel very unpolished and are missing important features that are necessary for astrophotographers using PC-based platforms. And there you have my initial impressions on this ZWO AM5. A big thank you again to Stars and Stuff for lending me his brand new mount. Make sure you check him out with the link in the description and send him some love. I hope this video has been useful to you. My name is Rowan, this is Astro with Roro, and clear skies.